close as I can get. Ladies and gents, this improv st story is based on the idea of a snooker player. Let the story commence. Craig was dead good at pool, but his, his mate said, one of his mates said, you should fucking go in for that snooker, by the way, the money they make there. He said, ah, but I don't play snooker. He said, you do? You're playing pool. He says, no, have you seen the size of a snooker table? How, bi how big is it? It's like about four times the size of a pool table. It's like, see the length, the the length, not the width, but the length of a pool table. That's about the width of a snooker table. You ever see that? No. Fucking huge. See when you see it in the telly, it doesn't date justice. The shots that they fucking make, it doesn't date justice. Because it's all sort of tilted, but see, to fucking hit a white ball for this fucking co this corner pocket, to that corner pocket out there and knock a ball in. It's fucking unreal talent. Unbelievable. And his mate, by the way, this is Craig, his mate John said, but Craig, you've got a real talent. Craig, you've got a real talent. And it just breaks my heart to see you waste it like this. You got this chance to get out of, get out of here. You get this chance to get out of here, kid. Um, and Craig goes, hey. all right, I'm going, to give, I'm going to give it a shot. No, it's not Christopher Walken. It just happened to be like that. You got this chance to get out of here, kid. Oh, see when I try to do Christopher Walken, I can't do him. Um, hey, I'm walking here. Um, I so, so Craig goes like that, right, so, how did it, so he had to, he went into the snooker halls, and he had to, he thought, I'm going to walk right in here, he started playing pool with snooker, he's like that to the, to the, the, the snooker fucking cunts that have been playing it for years, like that, right, so, what, what am I on, am I on dots or stripes, or do you call them big ones or wee ones? I had a pal who seen seen pool. He would say, uh, uh, "Right, I'm on the big ones. You're on the wee ones." You know, say what 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 are you on? Uh, big ones. I'm like, what are you on about? I'm not talking about red balls and yellow balls. You know how you'd have stripes and dots. He would call. I'll show you. Maybe. He would call. Right. Do you see that this is like a stripe? Look at the number nine there. Do you see? The fuck that is, but it can fuck off. Yeah, hold on. Um, do you see that number nine there? See how it's got a stripe? He would say that this is this is the wee stripes, and this is the big stripes. This is like a big gigantic stripe that's coming all the way around. Leaving just this wee white dot at the side. And he would call this the wee stripe. Even though that's also got a fucking white dot. He would call that big ones and wee ones instead of just fucking stripes and dots or whatever. I would call them dots and them stripes. Even though both have got fucking dots. Anyway... That's what Craig was like. So what? What am I on? Am I on the what? What? Like, what are you on about? It's a snooker. And Craig went like, "All right." Got laughed out of the place. He got laughed out of the place, and he went like, "Get back in there." Craig was really good at talk, getting himself back into something. He went back in. He went like, "Right, I'm going to be honest with you." Nobody was listening. They're all smoking. Even though you're not allowed to, they don't, they don't care. See the thing with snooker holes, nobody gives a fuck. Roll it up. He said, right. I don't know what the rules of snooker. 
but I'm a goddamn great pool player. And the reason why you're not telling me the rules is because you're scared. And this guy walked up for the back and went, are you calling me yellow? And Craig went, what, like a yellow ball? Yellow ball? Are you on yellows? You went, what are you on about? It's just a wee pool joke. Could you teach me the rules of snooker, please? And the guy went, all right, you've got 24 hours. And he taught him, run the clock, the rules of snooker. You know how I said 24 hours there? It took him 24 minutes. It took 24 minutes for Craig to pick up all the rules of snooker. The lot of it. Not just the, the rules that everybody knows, but the wee rules. Like, what do you do if there's like three fills in a row, things like that? What do you do if you get constantly snookered? What does it mean if this and that? The sort of thing that people sitting at home watching would be like that. Oh, what happens now then? What happens now then in this situation? He knew the lot. Um, so, see the guy that trained him? Craig says, right, so let me play you then. And the guy went, no, you don't get a shot at the title, not yet. Remember, this wasn't like the fucking, the competition that was on the telly, this is just in this one fucking Stuka club. You've got to start at the bottom. So he started playing against the kind of low rank people, the, the dafties, whipped him. Uh, higher, higher, higher. There was a few wee upsets, but he kept on going through. Some of the sort of middle ranking people in the the snooker club who had been trying to get good for ages were bitter about it so some of them actually did a bit of cheating they would when Craig wasn't looking they would go like that they'd stick a wee ball away like go like that you know if they were a wee bit ahead they'd start like putting some red balls in the pockets so that if when it was Craig's shot he wouldn't be able to catch up because there wasn't enough red balls Um. Craig caught them. The the top guy actually caught them and he cracked the fucking snooker curator that he'd brained them. Gave him brain damage. Uh, I look like I'm ready to laugh, but honestly, it was just because when, when some of these guys, because I actually saw some of this as a true story, see when one, some, one of these guys got hit out the head with a snooker cue and got brain damaged, he made the funniest face. It's one of the things that <laughs> that you're like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh because the reason why he's just made that face is just, he's just got fucking like a bit of his brain uh, damaged there. It was just for a moment. It was for about two seconds, and then his face went back to normal. But honestly, for about two seconds, his face went like that. something like that. He smiled. It was a kind of smile. That was weird about it. It made me laugh because I thought he was laughing at me. Um, stay, I can't get it out of my head. I have, I've got nightmares about it. I get nightmares about it. I'm seeing it right now. Hmm. That's that way. That's away now. I went, I went to, I had to go to a kind of like a therapist and he said, do that and it'll go away. I said, but is that not like, just doing like cartoons? He said, it's a symbol. You know how like, they did that and... Right, it's a symbolic gesture that will just sort of... Like sometimes I teach some of my clients, like if you're out and you don't like being in... Uh, claustrophobic situations or so, some sort of situation that, that you might get some sort of thing I, I teach them to hold these like two fingers like that right now that doesn't actually do anything but if you associate like doing something like that with like meditating you know a peaceful thing right then when you're out and you do something like that that will help you calm you down similarly 
if you're out and about and you get these visions of the guy that got brained with the sticker cue, just and you kind of get it, you just go like that. You don't even need to touch your eyes, just go like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it goes away. And it works, it worked. You got to do, I've got to do uh, an odd amount of times though. If I do it even, it undoes it. So I do it once, right? See if it's still there? I've got to do that a second time. But that would bring it back. Even if it hasn't been away. I've got to do it a third time. Uh, so eventually he got all the way up to the top, top guy. And the guy went, the guy who trained him, and he said to Craig, are you really going to do this? Craig went, do what? You really going to show me up? And Craig said, you think I could actually beat you? I didn't think I'd be able to beat you. And the guy said, Craig, you got it all. And Craig said, well, what do we do now then? And you will not believe what the guy did, the top guy. Rather than play Craig, rather than shite out of playing Craig, which would be shameful, rather than play Craig and get beaten, which would be shameful, the, 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 the other snooker people in the hall sort of came out in a mad like, ceremony sort of thing and they ripped the green felt off the snooker table and it's like what the fuck's going on here and laid it down on the ground in a kind of neat wee square and the top guy kneeled on it snapped the snooker cue in half and fucking plunged it into himself and went like that <laughs> Guts fell out. And then one walked up behind him and went like that. Whack! Right, right in his head. Knocked him out. Killed him. Um, and what what was sad about it, so it was like kind of... Uh, samurai sort of thing. What was sad about it was, see, just before he got that guy, the top guy, got whacked out of the head, just as just as one of the other snooker players was ready to whack him, Craig heard the guy go, like, "I've changed my mind." So even though he, even though he'd fucking ripped his guts out and they were lying on the ground, he went, "I've changed my mind," and then he got whacked. Uh, did they make the face? No. Craig didn't know if it was a coincidence. Uh, Craig didn't know if maybe if you've gutted yourself you then don't make the face if you get brained or if it's just a coincidence that you just happened to know that but he didn't do it. Anyway, to cut a long story short Craig was in the World Championships there at the Crucible. Steve Davis commentating. John Vodko commentating. Um, Steve Parrott commentating. Steve Parrott, by the way. Sheffield. Is it Steve Parrott? No, what's his name? Parrott, what's his name? John Parrott. Oh, apparently, it's in my history. That's right, I looked at his hair. The fucking heat of hair on this cunt. Look at the fucking heat of hair on him. Guess. Cunt's probably about 60. Look at this. He has not lost a single fucking hair since the day he was born. Look at this, man. Not a transplant at all. Never. At any point, has his hair looked like, right, I'm, I'm thinning a bit, I better go and get a transplant then. There he is, younger. Look. Guess look. Fuck me. Has not lost a single fucking follicle. Makes you fucking sick. Makes you fucking sick. 
he was commentating. And Craig did really, really well, and his pal John was in the crowd. And just as Craig was about to make the winning shot, it was right down to the fucking wire, by the way. Just as Craig was about to make the winning shot, his pal John stood up and went like, Mon John Craig! And Craig went like that. Craig went like this, look. Huh? Because he'd, like, it would be bad enough if he shouted Mon Craig, but he shouted Mon John, his own fucking name. His own name. He was steaming. He got drunk because he was, like, celebrating. My pal, that's my pal that's playing. My pal's there. My pal's playing tonight. That's my pal. It was me that got him into it. It was me that got him into it. And he went like that. Mon John Craig. And... Even just shouting Mon Craig would have been enough to put Craig off with that shot. But it was that, Mon John Craig, just as fucking Craig was like, you know, ready to take that last shot. Mon John Craig! And, and Craig went like, <laughs> And the fucking queue went right through the fucking felt, the green felt, ripped it. And, um... I'm actually working. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, obviously, some people don't take my professional streaming career, professional gamer career seriously. Um, rip to fucking felt. And then the other player went like that. So they had, to, they had to change the felt, they ripped that felt off, they put another felt on, put the boys back exactly where they were, and this other guy took the shot, because it's right down at the fucking, the, the, the black ball at the end, right? This is going to decide. Um, Took a fucking shot without even looking. So he went like that, the other guy went like that, and he went like that, looked to Craig like that, and it went in. And Craig went like, I can't take this. So he grabbed the green felt that had been ripped off previously. You know, the the, 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 the felt that he ripped. Quickly shoved it on the groom. Tried to copy what he saw that other guy do. Tried to break the queue. Couldn't, could hardly do it. Tried to break it again. Managed to snap it so it was all spiky. Stabbed, tried to stab it into himself. Like, went down on his knees, stabbed it into himself. They fucking grabbed him. They grabbed him and went, what you doing? What you doing? And then they forced him to watch the other guy, like, pick up the, the trophy. You know the what that? Fucking watch. Watch a kid. What? Watch. What? Mm -hmm. Open up. Open up your fucking eyes, kid. Hold his eyes open. Steve Davis was this side. John Parrott was, it, was on that side, holding that eye open. And John Virgo was it was like that. Was the one doing that. They're all fucking run him. Forcing him to watch this uh the guy picking up the the cup. <laughs> and then so he did he didn't win. He left. And that night <laughs> that night he went back to the, you know, he didn't know what to do with himself. Do you know the only place he knew where to go? Back to his old pool hall. He walked into that pool hall that night. They were all still there. Smoky place. <laughs> they all turned around. <laughs> Some walk in and he said, boys, I'm back. And you know what they did? They knocked fuck him. <laughs> they knocked absolute fuck him. <laughs> the end. <laughs> uh, 
Scrambled Greg, Shivering Pug.